Remember, if you ever see something like this, back off. Don't try to be a hero. Give the officers plenty of room. And again, we see this time and time again, and people ask, why do they run? Because they can, and sometimes they get away. In fact, in the city of Los Angeles, on average, 18% uh, of those being pursued are able to evade police, many on motorcycles. Some of those, however, though, Steve and Lisa, are situations where the police, uh, law enforcement, decides to pull off because of the danger to the public. Uh, uh, Los Angeles leads uh, the state in injuries, in fact, leads the nation in injuries to innocent people because of pursuits. Uh, so they try to be as careful as possible. That, that, that's absolutely right. Yeah, if you see some, it's, it certainly is. It almost looks like some sort of procession, right? That's what I, when I first saw it, you could see 35 miles an hour tops, maybe 30, 25 at times, just making uh, his way. The suspect, we believe it's a male suspect. I'm clear if anybody else is in the automobile or if it's just uh, being uh, driven uh, by the one alleged carjacking suspect. There's some kids on the sidewalk there too. Yeah, I, I, I've read about uh, that as well, Lisa, and it, it, covering so many of these up here uh, over the years. Yeah, I've seen some tragic ones and a, a, a lot that are conducted in a way that uh, they are brought to an end safely. There's only so much uh, they can do uh, in certain situations, especially when it's high speeds through residential areas. This one being a slow speed chase down Century Boulevard and now approaching LAX, uh, passing uh, the new stadium that will be the future home to the Rams and the Chargers by the forum here. A construction zone here, which would, uh, in a situation, if this was a higher speed pursuit, cause uh, some issues as well. But single file here, single lane on westbound Century Boulevard uh, approaching LAX now through the community of Inglewood. He's just not yielding. That part of it is uh, is Metro, the uh, extension around LAX. Uh, they're extending it so that we can get uh, a Metro rail service towards LAX here. And a lot of this uh, is a revamping of Century Boulevard as well. But single file, again, just one lane open here through Inglewood, still westbound on Century Boulevard. And it looks like he's going to continue westbound all the way to LAX. So I think what we will do is we're going to take sort of a southward approach and follow the 105 so we can uh, perhaps intercept this guy over towards the 405 freeway if he chooses to get on the 405 freeway. Right now, if, if, if you can envision coming into LAX, which both of you have many a times, and you come over the Forum, uh, Old Hollywood Park, the south runways on the complex at 25 left and 25 right, that's where you, you, you descend. You get down to uh, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, and then touch down just past Aviation Boulevard and the 405. And essentially, Century Boulevard is the line of that air traffic. So we can't be in the way. We cannot be in the way of those uh, jetliners. So we're in touch with uh, ATC, Air Traffic Control, at the LAX Tower, and they tell us uh, a window, an area, so to speak, that we can. So we're sort of wrapping around the south side of that restricted air down the 105 freeway here so that we can uh, connect with the 105 and the 405 and shoot him from the south towards the north as he continues to make his way westbound down Century Boulevard. He's gonna, Century Boulevard essentially ends and begins, as you both know, right at LAX, and that's the direction that he's moving through the community of Inglewood right now. No word of any accidents or anything, or anybody injured at this time, but, uh, but still a dangerous situation, especially if it was a carjacking, he could have a weapon. That, that's certainly a, a possibility. That is one tactic. You see the pit maneuvers where they spin them out, they disable them, laying down the spike strips, which isn't a, a situation uh, that can be used that often unless it's on, a, on, on an open freeway and they know that that suspect is traveling in that direction. There it is. You see it. We still got a decent shot. There's the Hollywood Park Casino, which uh, has been uh, torn down here in the construction area for the new stadium. He continues westbound, a relatively slow speed, driving safely. He has run a couple of uh, stoplights, but he does stop at them and make sure that there's no opposing traffic. We have not heard of any collisions uh, that have resulted from this uh, pursuit, which started, we believe, in the Southgate area. And again, it's the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, that agency, that picked this pursuit up first. 
And again, we're hearing from our assignment desk that uh, this uh, individual, most likely a male, is a carjacking suspect. Whether or not that carjacking took place uh, just a short time ago this morning, unclear on that. But he continues to make his way uh, westbound, and we still got a good shot. And again, we are doing, uh, we're shooting this from the south side of uh, LAX now, so we can get a better angle as opposed to looking directly down or westbound. We are looking due west towards LAX down Century Boulevard. And he continues westbound here. Traffic is still moving on both sides, and law enforcement uh, trailing him as well. And because of that air traffic at LAX, in fact, I think we'll get a southwest plane coming into our view here, 737 that's making a, a landing on runway 25 left here at LAX. That law enforcement helicopters can't be up either. It's not just us. All helicopters have to stay away because of the safety uh, uh, of these jetliners that are coming into LAX. And we are watching Inglewood now right on the border uh, of LAX here, Century Boulevard, approaching the 405 freeway. And see, we'll see what he does. There's an on-ramp uh, here to both the north and southbound sides of the 405 freeway from Century Boulevard. And we'll see if he chooses to get on the freeway. If he continues in a westerly direction, he's going to continue right through uh, the slot there, the LAX slot, that busy stretch of Century Boulevard between the 405 and the LAX complex. Still moving very slowly here, as you can see. I loved it. Yeah. All right, everyone, Samia here. For those of you just joining us, you are looking at a live feed coming in from Southern California. Seems to be where mo most of our police chases come in from. Again, this is a police chase, police pursuing a carjacking suspect in the area of LAX and Inglewood. Not exactly a high-speed chase. There's a lot of opposing. There's a lot of opposing traffic. There's eastbound traffic there that to be concerned with. A lot of cars. Let's listen in on what the helicopter reporter is saying now. There's a lot to take into consideration here. Still westbound on Century Boulevard. By the way, Lisa, I think I did see that piece on PBS that you did. They train for those pit maneuvers up uh, in the north end of the San Fernando Valley. We uh, we show that uh, from up here in Sky Fox. Those guys, uh, those officers uh, protecting our city are always up there uh, training in adverse conditions. They wet down the roadway. They practice their maneuverability. And there's the sign, LAX, and you can see, watch that jetliner. See, that's what we're talking about. That's why we can't be right on top of them. We're over the interchange with the 405 and the 105 freeway. There's the 405, and he's continuing westbound towards LAX now. And this is a very busy stretch of Century. You know it if you take that off-ramp, that Century Boulevard off-ramp from the 405 to enter the complex. So he's going to be encountering a lot of traffic here, all those stoplights backing up westbound. That's right. Yeah, that, that's right. And it, what's in his mind? You know, we always we always ask that. What, what is he thinking at this time? Well, he wants to get away. And as I mentioned, uh, some do. Uh, around 18 uh, percent in the city of Los Angeles do. And as long as he's not uh, in custody and he's free, he feels that he still is empowered and he's hopeful that he can get away. Whether or not he's talking to somebody right now, trying to get a plan. Sometimes we see these pursuits wind their way back into neighborhoods that they're familiar with so that they feel that they have an easier time evading police. But this guy seems to be, uh, he, that, that's right, foot bail. No question. And he just ran that red light right there because you could see the gr green light on the opposite. There's the uh, metro uh, rail construction there for the extension to, to get you your uh, way into LAX. And 
maybe he's going to LAX. Maybe he's just, you know, he's acting like nothing's going on behind him, and he's heading to, to LAX for some reason. Perhaps he thinks he can uh, get lost there. Well, he's finally going to make a right turn or a northbound turn here. So we're going to make a midfield transition through LAX. We're going to make a midfield transition through LAX. I'm communicating with my pilot here so that we can make our way northbound across the complex uh, and then pick it up on the other side. Again, what we do here now, which you'll see, and we show this a lot, Steve and Lisa from up here in Skyfox, we make uh, a, what we call an LAX transition. We can do it at about 1,500 feet directly center over the airport. So the planes can make their way beneath us. Or we make the shoreline transition where we're just maybe 50, 60 feet off the sand uh, on the edge of the uh, LAX complex here. So he's making his way northbound. I think that's Aviation Boulevard there from Century Boulevard. That will take him uh, back towards Inglewood, uh, perhaps the Fox Hills area. Unclear how much fuel he has at this time. And uh, we'll see. It looks like uh, he's entering into a parking lot now. And uh, we're doing the... First of all, we're unclear uh, for sure if it was a carjacking. That's what we're hearing, and we're unclear if that actually happened in Southgate. Southgate is where we first uh, heard of this pursuit, and that's a good uh, 15 miles from this location now, and it's been going for some time. Now, he is making his way back westbound on this uh, surface street here. This is an area that used to be uh, uh, heavily clogged with homes, that open greenery there, but as the jet age took hold over Southern California, those homes were removed. This is where a lot of the long-term parking is where you could, uh, that satellite location where you can pick up, uh, you can pick up passengers as well. So he's gonna make his way back north uh, and uh, passing uh, LAX. So he's uh, gonna avoid LAX uh, and we're gonna continue to make our transition in a northward direction here, past the runways uh, of 24 right and 24 left and 25 left and 25 right here at LAX as he makes his way north. Volume light on this street here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> we did. Always allow yourself uh, an hour and a half for domestic and two hours plus for international, right? Well, maybe he thought that he could he could lose, uh, he could evade uh, officers in this area because it is so congested. That's a possibility. Again, the mindset of these guys, uh, we don't know. A lot of times they are unstable. There are certain situations where they're under the influence, and they're just trying to get away from uh, police. But he's not doing it in a hurry. He's... You're absolutely right. And there, there is no ordinary uh, routine uh, pursuit. There's no ordinary or routine stop by any means. We saw that tragic situation uh, unfold at the beginning of last week uh, in Whittier, in which we lost one of our uh, brave first responders. And, and that's how they're treating this uh, as well. And if it does turn out that this was a carjacking, and that is a carjacking suspect uh, inside that vehicle there, uh, he very may well be armed, and they are treating it as such. So they've run the plates. They know what the, uh, where the car uh, is registered to. They, they have that information. Whether or not they have any more information on that suspect, uh, the LA County Sheriff's Department, again, that's the agency that started this. That's unclear. All right. Uh, about a half a dozen, the lead uh, car, their patrol car there still is LA County Sheriff's. And uh, again, we are in the city of Los Angeles now, this area around LAX and Westchester. He did make a westbound turn. We'll get this street for you in just a moment. We'll tilt up and see the sign there uh, on Manchester, Manchester Boulevard uh, here. So this is on the north side of LAX. If you come down uh, Lincoln or Sepulveda towards LAX, uh, this is the area of Los Angeles, uh, the Westchester community uh, of, uh, of Los Angeles, just north of LAX. There's some people out in their backyard checking out the scene. Uh, and again, uh, oh, no question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Code three, as we call it. That's right. He's a uh, lights and siren. And, uh, and again, uh, if you ever encounter a situation like this, do not try to box in the suspect. We've seen that happen. And sometimes we've seen it uh, be done successfully by a bystander who just thinks uh, he can help out not a wise thing to do because you don't know what you're dealing with in this situation. You could put yourself and uh, officers and other individuals in danger. Just back off, give them as much space uh, as they need, pull to the right shoulder, and let the officers do what they're trained to do, bring these pursuits to a safe conclusion. 
Uh, oh, you're absolutely right. No, you're right. You're right. I bet the bottom line, just like with anything else, when you see a, you know, a, a hook and ladder, a fire engine come up, what do you do? You slow down and you pull to the right. Obviously, you do the same exact situation when you see officers. Uh, and you can see officers are positioned uh, in this neighborhood. And this is uh, at this intersection, Lincoln and Manchester. And it looks like it could be just up. Oh, no, he's going to make his way through that intersection. And he actually has a green on that one because the opposing traffic had right. Oh, good. OK. And heading towards uh, LMU now, westbound on Manchester. Uh, again, Manchester, one of those major east-west thoroughfares that uh, makes its way uh, through the city of Los Angeles from the west side, the coast side, all the way to the east side here. And 68th and Central, that's an unincorporated area of uh, Los Angeles. So that's why the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department picked it up first. We talk about these different agencies and why one agency is leading the pursuit and not the other. If it would have been in the city of Los Angeles, the official city limits and LAPD would be the lead, but because it was in that unincorporated area adjacent to South Los Angeles, that's why the Sheriff's Department has picked it up. And it continues to uh, pick up at a very slow rate here, uh, Steve and Lisa. Same, same general uh, scene that we saw when we first picked this pursuit up uh, around the 110 freeway and Century Boulevard. He continues to make his way westbound here on Manchester. has joined in and is watching. It'll come into frame on the right side there. An LA County Sheriff's helicopter is circling and watching overhead as well. So this is a westbound on Manchester through the community of Westchester on the north side of LAX here. And we're gonna be approaching that very busy intersection. And because this pursuit is going so slowly and primarily staying on these major streets, we were century first and now we are on uh, Manchester both uh, significant major east-west thoroughfares through the city of Los Angeles. They are positioning police officers at these intersections to hold traffic so that there won't be any type of collision, even though this guy has been behaving himself quite well, this carjacking suspect. There's Lincoln Boulevard there, uh, as uh, you just can affirm down there in the newsroom. Uh, this uh, four-door, this boxy uh, car looks kind of like a Scion. Uh, not sure of the exact uh, make of the car. We'll try to get a, a better... Uh, a better look at it, but tinted windows as well, which is problematic because that means officers don't know what's going on perhaps in the back seat if there's some other individuals in there and the visibility inside the automobile there is more difficult for them as well. But the bottom line, this uh, suspect, this carjacking suspect has been driving at relatively low speeds, uh, behaving through the intersections. He does run the red lights, but he stops. He looks both ways, makes sure there's no opposing traffic. He doesn't want to get in any collision. And his vehicle looks like it's in pretty good shape. It does not look like it was involved in any crashes and any collisions prior to when we first picked this pursuit up. No, we really haven't. No. No. All right, for those of you just joining uh, us, we have been monitoring this police chase in Los Angeles. Looks like the helicopter reporter is speaking once again, so let's listen in to him instead. Playa del Rey towards the shoreline if he continues here on uh, Manchester. This is a, a nice enclave of the city of Los Angeles. Our city extends uh, from the coast here, inland, uh, beyond downtown LA, northward to the San Fernando Valley, up towards Chatsworth and south through the Harbor Gateway down towards San Pedro. And this is uh, the portion of LAX which actually touches the ocean. Not a lot of uh, the city of Los Angeles actually does. A lot of people believe it's situated right on the coast, but it's the beach cities uh, that have their city limits within the coast. But this area actually does just south of Marina del Rey, the channel there, the entrance to uh, the harbor area here. And this is uh, an area of uh, Playa del Rey here, Westchester uh, on Manchester. And he's continuing westbound, 
You see the uh, greenery there in the middle. Eastbound traffic is still moving. Uh, people are stopping and pulling to the right if need be. And he went through another uh, intersection there. He had the green light there at Fairmouth. Absolutely, yep. No question. Again, the suspect in Playa del Rey on Manchester. Now, it looks like he's about to approach Pershing Drive. Now, the suspect has to make a decision here. Is he going to make a right or a left? You can't really go straight from there. Uh, and he decides to make a left. He is heading in the direction of LAX once again. This is the area of Playa del Rey, just north of LAX. Back towards LAX. He's heading southbound towards uh, runways 24 right and 24 left here on Pershing. If we could get a little farther west, we'll be able to get a better uh, shot of this. Uh, again, Pershing Drive here coming out of Playa del Rey, and then he'll be approaching Westchester Parkway. So let's see if he turns back to the east on Westchester Parkway and stays on the north side of the complex or makes his way uh, right underneath uh, the runways, the takeoff points at LAX. Uh, it's a nice morning. It's dry out. The sun is out here. Weather's not a concern. This guy's going at a very slow pace. He's coming up on the intersection now, heading southbound on Pershing towards Westchester Parkway. Let's see if he makes that left turn or not. And it looks like he is going to continue in a southward direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a southbound shoreline approach at LAX so that we can uh, stay with this. That's right. He's, and he's going to take the coastal route. He's taking Imperial Highway. He's making his way west on Imperial, and that's where he will intersect Vista Del Mar, which is essentially the shoreline road right up against Dockweiler State Beach here at the edge of LAX. So making his way now in a westerly direction on Imperial Highway, and then he will have to make another decision. He'll either turn right and head north, back underneath uh, the runways here at LAX, northbound on Vista Del Mar, or make his way south down towards El Segundo, El Porto, and the beach city. So we'll see what he does here. You see the famous sand dunes here at the edge of the airport that you see when you take off uh, home to the El Segundo butterfly uh, in the chaparral there and those brush-covered hills. Here it is. That's Vista Del Mar right there. There's the parking lots at Dockweiler State Beach, the beach there that uh, so many people go down to enjoy with the, uh, with the bonfires there. And let's see what he does, east or west, or he'll go into the parking lot and go to the beach up. I oh, was going to go west. Now he's or he was going to go north, now he's going to go south. So he's going to head south into the beach cities. Uh, there certainly are. And now that we are officially in the city limits of Manhattan Beach, the Manhattan Beach Police Department, they're aware of the situation here, and they will likely be aiding in this, perhaps providing traffic control maybe adding some additional, there you go, right there, into frame. That's a Manhattan Beach police officer 
guarding the intersections there. That's what happens. It turns into a mutual aid situation as these pursuits uh, make their way into different uh, jurisdictions, different cities that often occur. So they'll get the help, especially traffic control. And maybe some of these sheriff's deputies aren't familiar with the layout of these particular neighborhoods. They will get help from the uh, jurisdiction as well, and that's exactly what's happening here. And he continues to make his way southbound. This uh, alleged carjacking suspect on Highland Avenue approaching now the Manhattan Beach Pier. And street lights and stop signs, people making their way across. There's another Manhattan Beach police officer there. So they're doing the best they can to protect uh, the public. They try the spike trip again right there. Did not work, so because he's moving at such a slow rate and he's been staying on, that's not a wise thing to do if you are out watching to get that close. So you really want to back off. You saw that one, uh, that one gentleman there getting awfully close into the street there. The situation is, is with these spike strips, because this guy is essentially staying on the same streets he gets comfortable with. We saw him for miles on Century, then he made his way north through LAX, and then he took Manchester all the way to the sea, and then uh, picked up uh, Vista Del Mar, which turns into Highland, and he's been on that for several miles now. There you go. Looks like that Tesla pulling over to the right, doing what he should do when something like this comes up. We're at uh, Highland now, right in the heart of downtown Manhattan Beach. In fact, the police department is just a block or so away from this intersection, and these intersections are very busy. Uh, parking on both sides, one way in both directions. Fortunately, he has uh, slowed down a bit again. And, and at this point, we're hoping that he's, you know, they're able to throw out another spike strip if he continues in this direction. Uh, we've been seeing the officers uh, buzz to get up ahead of them. Uh, there's an LA County Sheriff's helicopter circling overhead, watching and relaying the important information. There's another officer there from the Nanhattan Beach Police Department. It does not look like even the first spike strip was successful because from our vantage point, it doesn't look like uh, those uh, tires have been disabled at this point. That's one uh, method. They could try to box them in. You know, especially in a situation like this, they could perhaps get an officer in front of him, but then you, you get into some danger. You don't know if he sees that, that patrol car up in advance, he could pick up speed and, and plow right into him. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Another one right in front of him. So let's see what happens. Let's widen out a little bit. We'll keep the we'll keep the picture on, uh, obviously, on the suspect, but we'll see uh, where this. Uh, that's a sheriff's deputy. They're not a Manhattan Beach police officer, and uh, he's uh, making his way far to the south of where the pursuit actually is. And let's see if he positions himself and tries to do something. Now there's not much traffic on this stretch. This is a stretch uh, between uh, right on the border of Hermosa, Manhattan Beach, and the pier here. And uh, this is where, oh yeah, this is where Highland uh, T-bones here. So let's see what uh, let's see what happens here. He he chose to go left, uh, so he's going to go left too because maybe he's thinking that that was a decoy. Like, why would you want to follow another officer? Well, maybe there was something waiting for him on the southbound or on the uh, on the westbound side. There's Spike Strip again. He hit that one. He definitely hit that one. Traveling uh, now eastbound, coming off of Highland. So let's see if this. Uh, did a number on the tires here. Ah, oh, man, this is such a tight residential uh, area. Yeah, three. That was three. First one, it didn't appear to work. Second one, definitely didn't. That one looks like he hit it. But what we can't tell from up here is whether or not those, uh, those spikes were actually aligned in such a way so that they were able to disable the, the tires. Now making his way into Hermosa Beach. So now we're into uh, the second of the three beach cities. We have Redondo on the far south and Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach uh, on the north. Oh, made a stop there and uh, making uh, now a northbound turn. Uh, and, and, and I gotta think he doesn't know which way he's going because these, uh, these streets here, uh, some are one way. This is a real tight, windy neighborhood here in Hermosa Beach, right on the border of Manhattan Beach. Heading back now into Manhattan Beach in a northbound uh, direction here. And there's officers all over this uh, neighborhood. Fortunately, school is in session now, so all the kids are in the classroom and there's not a lot of pedestrian traffic here as we see all these crosswalks. So 
The first thing they want to do is they want to disable this vehicle. They want him to, to stop. And then at that point, because uh, Lisa, as you pointed out, he could have a weapon, then he doesn't have his vehicle. So now they can negotiate with him and hopefully get him to just surrender and it ends peacefully. But they know that he's not going to have a vehicle to make his way uh, anywhere else. So their, their prime motive here, their prime goal is to disable the vehicle. And we've seen that with the spike strip attempt three times now. They've thrown that out, and uh, unclear if that third one, he hit it, but again, uh, whether or not uh, those uh, spikes actually really engaged with the tires, that's unclear at this time. Very popular area here, uh, this uh, Valley Ardmore area. There goes another uh, LA County Sheriff's Patrol car in front of him. A lot of people run and walk. That's right, This uh, again, this is a, uh, a very popular stretch of Manhattan Beach. It's Valley Drive and Ardmore. Uh, it's Ardmore if you're traveling northbound, which he is, but now he's going to make a left turn, and he may get on Valley here, which would take him back to the southbound uh, side. So let's see what he does. He, it's only one way, so he's got he's to make a left turn here. And uh, he's been driving uh, the same pretty much since his pursuit started. It does not appear, just from the way the vehicle is moving, that uh, there's been much uh, in the way of damage to the tires. They look, they look pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been it's been quite some time, close to 45 minutes now, I believe, uh, when we first picked this up, uh, right at the 105 in Century Boulevard. And this suspect, this uh, carjacking suspect, made his way westbound on Century Boulevard all the way to LAX, and then made a, a, a northbound turn to pick up Manchester, and then he made his way westbound on Manchester through Westchester, through Playa del Rey, picked up Vista del Mar, southbound on Vista del Mar, picked up Highland from El Segundo into Manhattan Beach. Now he is on Valley Drive. Valley Drive runs. Uh, to the south, it's one way. Ardmore on the other side runs to the north and in between there's a nice greenway, a path for runners and joggers on this beautiful March 1st morning and there's a lot of activity there and uh, unbeknownst to a lot of those people what, uh, what's passing them. Uh, a, perhaps a very dangerous individual who could be armed who uh, allegedly uh, pulled off uh, a carjacking. There's officers there, again a mutual aid holding traffic. No, it does not look uh, to be the case at all. It, it did. Yeah, it, it, we would have seen uh, definitely some deflation of these tires, and we just have not seen that as of yet. It's difficult because, as you see, they have to get up ahead of the suspect, toss that strip out, and hope that that strip aligns perfectly, meaning the spikes are erect, and that the suspect uh, engages with those spikes in such a way that those tires uh, become hit, just deflated. Oh, we got a good look at him here. We finally, it looks like he rolled down the window there. He's got his arm out. Uh, we could not tell, didn't look like it. Looks like he's uh, perhaps engaging with uh, people, looking uh, to the left here. Uh, so definitely a, a male, a, a, a shaved head here, and uh, you can see the tinted windows. We believe it's just the driver uh, inside the car. And again, if you're just picking this up, an alleged carjacking suspect uh, that we first heard of in the uh, Southgate, uh, unincorporated area of L.A. County, and that's why the L.A. County Sheriff's Department uh, is the lead agency on this pursuit. But getting help now by the Manhattan Beach Police Department because we're in the heart of Manhattan Beach, and he's just making a, a nice stroll through the beach city on this well, it's turning out to be a beautiful uh, day here in Southern California. I will say this is the first time he's hanging in this, the same area. So maybe he has a connection here. Perhaps not. He's just lost because these, uh, these streets are, uh, are a little uh, challenging to navigate if you're not familiar with the neighborhood. But he is now making his way kind of in a circular direction around Manhattan Beach here. So with that, uh, again, because so many of these we have seen that suspects will go to an area that they are familiar with. However, being that he came from Century Boulevard, he would have had the option to, uh, to make his way south when he reached LAX to get to this neighborhood. So that makes me think perhaps he doesn't. He's just trying to evade police. He's still not in custody. Perhaps a third strike, or if he carjacks someone, <laughs> that one strike is enough to get him uh, into some serious trouble, in addition to all the uh, vehicular uh, laws that he's broken on this uh, Wednesday morning.
Yeah, it's unclear at this time. We're going to have to uh, take care of some business up here really quick, so we're going to uh, watch this as long as we can, but I'm going to toss it back uh, to you two for now. All right, everyone, Ron Hoon did have to step aside to go to his morning show meeting. I'm still with you here as we follow along this pursuit that we've been watching for over an hour now here on Fox News Now. Police pursuing a carjacking suspect through South LA, the LAX area. Now we are in the South Bay area. Seems to be the Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach area. The carjacking suspect leading police on a low-speed pursuit with no indication that he has plans to surrender anytime soon. Again, guys, we are watching this live police pursuit out of Southern California. The suspect driving at a low rate of speed, driving over spike strips. Multiple police units pursuing this suspect in Southern California. We are in the South Bay area. The question is, what is going through the suspect's mind right now? How long will it be before this pursuit ends? Again, the suspect has traveled for miles throughout the Los Angeles area, starting in South LA, going south to Westchester, westbound through Playa del Rey, south into the LAX area, and now through the South Bay cities of Manhattan Beach and Hermosa Beach.
It's been a very bizarre chase to follow along. The driver driving at a low rate of speed, for the most part traveling safely, traveling very casually. At one point, we saw the suspect just hanging his arm out the window as deputies pursued. There was one moment where the suspect drove on the wrong side of the road through Manhattan Beach. We also watched that the suspect rolled the stop sign. For the most part though, following most traffic cues. It's very bizarre now. The suspect stopping in the middle of an intersection. It is unclear what his next move is. Looks like he is making a left turn and continuing to evade police. As you can see, multiple police units pursuing this suspect. Look like they have gone in, but he keeps evading police. Even when he's been struck, he continues to evade police. Again, this is a carjacking suspect. a pursuit that has gone on for over an hour now. We've been covering it for you for about an hour and 15 minutes now here on News Now. Is it over? Not quite. The suspect now traveling backwards. The suspect traveling in reverse. Yes, this is happening right now. Multiple lanes, a very bizarre scene in the South Bay of California, South Bay of Los Angeles. A number of viewers tweeting me, Barrett Marston tweeting me, that was an awesome move, very action movie, don't you think? A lot of people reacting that it looks like they're shooting a movie in LA. This guy is driving like a stuntman. Mike tweeting me, that Scion has a gas tank just shy of 12 gallons and gets 32 miles per gallon in the city. Oh, and it looks like The surrender was inevitable. Police have him cornered. Again, viewer discretion is advised as this was a carjacking suspect. It's possible he is armed. Again, viewer discretion is advised. And we have removed the lower third banner temporarily so you guys can get a clear view of the situation there in Southern California. 
Police have a carjacking suspect cornered. Again, a carjacking suspect is cornered. He's still inside the vehicle. Viewer discretion is advised. We'll continue to monitor this scene. Again, viewer discretion is advised. As you can see, officers have their guns out. The suspect inside that vehicle. The question is, will he surrender peacefully? Back. That was uh, that, that was amazing. Down Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1 in Redondo Beach, busy on both sides any time of day. All right, we have a couple different sources, a couple different aerial feeds, choppers from the scene. We're gonna switch back and forth from them so that you guys can get all angles of this scene. Again, the suspect is still inside the vehicle. Carjacking suspect, a police pursuit that went on for almost an hour and a half here on News Now. Again, you can see the officers with their guns drawn. The suspect still inside the vehicle. The question is, is the suspect wanted for carjacking armed and dangerous? Officers are not taking any chances, as you can see. They have their guns drawn. The suspect, for now, staying inside the vehicle. Let's go ahead and check in with our Fox LA chopper reporter now. He endangered a number of people, especially here in Redondo Beach. And that is the agency now that is handling this. The Redondo Beach uh, Police Department here on Pacific Coast Highway, just south of uh, Catalina, only blocks from the beach. And this pursuit uh, made its way down uh, the South Bay, just a block or two from the beach, from LAX southward into the beach cities, from El Segundo, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and now to this point. Finally, they were able to successfully pit uh, Pursuit intervention, uh, intervention uh, technique, uh, essentially spin him out. Uh, that uh, pit maneuver uh, was uh, essentially uh, designed by an officer in Fairfax County, uh, Virginia, and uh, then was uh, that maneuver was uh, shared with other agencies across the country over the years, and now it is a successful means of bringing a pursuit to the end. His wheels were disabled. Ah, you know, they're, yeah, they are, uh, they're, they're guns drawn, they're concerned. You know, this guy's not giving up. No, not at all. No, and let's widen out a little bit, and I'll show you what they are doing to protect uh, protect everybody here. The major intersection of that Pacific Coast Highway, up and down, top to the bottom of your screen, will tilt up. That's PB Drive. They have dr traffic blocked there completely, so you can't make your way on in either direction. And then tilting down, you can see the officers on the opposing side of Pacific Coast Highway, which would be the northbound side of PCH, uh, holding traffic there as well. They're negotiating with this guy. They're hoping uh, that he will surrender. He'll get out of the automobile. Unclear if there is anybody else inside the vehicle. That is a possibility. Again, the windows have been t uh, tinted. It was a carjacking, and there's certain situations where we've seen that uh, actually the innocent person uh, goes along for the ride, but no indication of that uh, from what we saw during this pursuit.
Yeah, he, he certainly did. He, he took on a more casual demeanor. The whole pursuit has been somewhat casual in that the speeds were low. He was uh, abiding by each street light, a stop light that he'd stop. And if he did have the red, he'd go through it, but he made sure both sides were clear. He never went over the speed limit, uh, and he just made his way relatively safely, except that he wasn't yielding to officers, through South LA, towards LAX, uh, into Westchester. Yeah, all the, he did a loop around the complex, uh, as we did. And then, and then finally, when he got into the beach cities, he rolled down the window, as you guys mentioned, and looked like he made some gestures at some, you know, some people, possibly some other motorists. Uh, spike strips were laid out a number of times, and it looks like finally uh, either the uh, third or perhaps a fourth one uh, that we did not witness was successful and did disable the two right side tires, the front right and the bottom, uh, uh, the, uh, the rear right tires. And with that, that car, was uh, diminished, it was compromised. Its, uh, its ability to drive was compromised, so it was moving at a much slower rate. That's when it entered Redondo Beach, and that's when the Redondo Beach Police Department took control, and they uh, attempted the pit a couple of times, uh, and finally, they were successful here on Pacific Coast Highway, just to the south of Catalina Avenue. Powell's Birdies Drive, I should say. And the, and, the, and the driving in reverse, just unbelievable. At the speed down Pacific Coast Highway, down Pacific Coast Highway, he was in the right side. He was on the right side of Pacific Coast Highway because he was moving southbound on PCH, but he was moving in reverse southbound. So, yeah. And, and that one truck that, uh, that, that we saw there was unclear if they were trying to, uh, to help police officers or not. Uh, but when he was making his way, in reverse like that. He was moving at a, a good clip, a high rate of speed, one of the highest speeds he had been through the whole pursuit. And he was aimed at another officer. So he was endangering, a, whenever a situation like that starts to happen, uh, they, they definitely uh, are in risk, these officers. And And here we are now, uh, and it's a standoff, uh, a half a dozen or so, plus uh, officers from the Redondo Beach Police Department, guns drawn. Uh, they, have a, uh, they have the suspect, a target, uh, right there, just in case uh, that uh, that force is needed. Hey. It, it, no, absolutely not. And and I would say, I mean, that the suspect uh, is not. Uh, the officers are doing, uh, you know, what they've been trained to do. And the situation here, too, is if there was an exchange of gunfire here, they have to be concerned about these units here, these condominiums, these two-story condominiums on the south side of Pacific Coast Highway. Now, it looks like, uh, yeah, and these people are, are, are pretty close watching all this unfold, which is a little bit of a surprise, and that if gunfire was was needed and and they don't want that to happen at all obviously they want to bring this to a peaceful conclusion and it would come to a conclusion i think this is a point where we can make the point because you know we've seen so many officer related incidents uh you know justifiable force unjustifiable force the bottom line in a situation like this you have a suspect who is driving recklessly endangering the lives of officers and other people he's inside that car he's being given strict instructions Give up, we will handcuff you, we'll take you down to the police department, we'll book you, we'll interview you, and nobody will get hurt. That's what they're trying to do here, but he's not giving up. There's no question. Yep. And, 
And, and what's happening right now, they will bring in, uh, if not one of these officers is already trained, uh, speaking of uh, making their, their dollars and cents, uh, as negotiators, they're you know, trained a little bit more perhaps than an ordinary, an ordinary beat uh, patrol officer so that they have the right language. They know what to uh, say to communicate with suspects like this who just aren't willing to give up. We don't know uh, what we're dealing with here. This individual could be under the influence. Uh, he could be uh, you know, emotionally unstable. Obviously, at some point, he is. You know, he may be going through some serious personal issues. We don't know the whole story. And with that, uh, there's a situation that you know, these suspects at times don't really care if they live or die, unfortunately. And with that being the case, Yeah, it was, it was something else uh, to watch that. I had never seen anything like that before, where uh, he was traveling at such a high rate of speed and was able to maneuver the automobile. On PCH, Highway 1, and the heart of Redondo Beach here, and uh, was able to maneuver the car despite the fact that uh, the two right wheels uh, were disabled. And that's what they, they, all they want to do is bring this to a peaceful end, and that's what they're communicating to him. They said, hey, give up, please, hands up. Nobody gets hurt. We'll talk to you. you know, let's keep everything calm here, and let's, uh, let's end this. You know, your life isn't over yet, uh, but, uh, but we don't want anybody to get hurt at this point. And, and this is a standoff situation, and we've seen standoffs like this last for hours. Why? Because they don't want to give up. They feel that they're still, uh, they're still not in custody at this time. Yeah, they, they do. And again, some of that, though, at least in Steve, is that the officers pull back. They pull back. But uh, but there are uh, and we've seen we've seen a few of them up here actually uh, get away or or we hear on the scanner that they lost the suspect. Uh, motorcyclists have an easier time of uh, getting away and evading police, obviously, because of uh, their mode of transportation. But 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 yes, uh, close to 20 percent uh, uh, do actually get away. And this guy uh, isn't going to get away, but this could last for some time in a big stretch of PCH they are shutting down now in fact fire crews arriving on scene several blocks of Pacific Coast Highway both north and southbound uh, between it looks like Palos Verdes Boulevard now and Prospect closed so traffic uh, is being diverted around this and this could be a situation that lasts uh, for some time And run from the police or not. That's exactly right. And this guy is, and he, he's refusing to, uh, to give up to the Redondo Beach Police Department. Now, again, the lead agency on this, because we keep talking about that, just to sort of educate you how all of these uh, pursuits uh, happen. The lead agency was the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department because it was in their jurisdiction that that carjacking or the, si the situation in which the suspect was picked up uh, and followed occurred in their jurisdiction. That's why they are the lead agency. And they stayed on it all the way through LAX, uh, Playa del Rey into uh, El Segundo, and they are still here. But then the lead agencies change as you go into jur different jurisdictions. We saw that in Manhattan Beach when they went into Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach police uh, either aided or they became the lead agency. And it was the Redondo Beach Police Department that really did uh, take the helm and uh, brought this pursuit to an end successfully without hurting Anybody, uh, any innocent people out there, but how this will end. That we, we, we don't, that we don't know that. That's the, that information we're still trying to find out. So at times, we hear of a carjacking, you know, 10 blocks away. The guy takes off. They get a call about the carjacking, and then it was at that location 
where they first intercepted the guy and lit him up. He didn't pull over, he didn't yield, and the pursuit was on. So we're still trying to ascertain that information, specifically where the carjacking took place, how the officers uh, encountered the suspect. Uh, maybe they witnessed it, maybe they were right there, or maybe they uh, intercepted this guy uh, a, a distance away. And, uh, and, uh, and it could have happened uh, an hour before as well. We don't know at this time. Unbelievable, and and he he was able to maintain control. That was that was precision driving, especially with two disabled wheels, tires, two tires completely out here. No question. Yep. Like I said, we don't know if he if he wants, you know, if he's this guy wants to live or die. We don't know his history, if he's already a third striker, if he's a parolee. Bottom line, uh, he's not giving up at this time. And the time is on the officer's side. He's not going anywhere. Officers. Uh, No question. Uh, you can, yeah, at least. And you can see some police tape up. So now they're starting to set up a little bit more of a perimeter. As I indicated, uh, if uh, this were to end in an unfortunate way where gunfire was exchanged, and it will only end that way, and I need to make this point time and time again, it will only end that way if the suspect doesn't do what he's told. And he does something that's erratic that may lead the officers to think that their lives or other people's lives are in danger. Again, shootings, the majority of them, 99.9% .9 of them, only occur because the suspect or suspects do something they haven't been told. They, they've been told, I should say. And uh, the situation here, he's being told, he, he said, he's been told, hands up, you know, let's, uh, let's bring this to a peaceful end, and he's choosing not to, not to surrender at this point. A large area has been uh, cordoned off on Pacific Coast Highway. Again, PCH north and southbound, a major north-south thoroughfare here through Bedondo Beach into Torrance and Hermosa Beach block between uh, Palos Verdes Drive on uh, essentially the west side of PCH here because this stretch of PCH sort of runs east-west here, the bend here, and Prospect. You can see all the people, the onlookers uh, in front of uh, Rock and Brews there and uh, ground uh, media arriving on scene here as well. And this guy just refuses to give up. But once again... Time is on the officer's side. They may need to bring in more crisis negotiators. Hey, you're exactly right. And they have to, again, they're mindful of the fact that he may have a weapon. They obviously are acting that way because of the situation that unfolded that led to this uh, pursuit, this relatively slow speed pursuit. And if you are just joining us, it was uh, at or below speed limits for the majority of the time. It wasn't until it entered Redondo Beach here, uh, uh, fourth or fifth city that this pursuit made its way through in Southern California, did it get really erratic uh, where he started to get a little more agitated uh, and then uh, started to, uh, to pick up speed a little bit. and was trying to do what he could to evade police. And then once uh, the initial pit maneuver was attempted, that's when he really, uh, he really went out of control, driving backwards, trying to uh, pick up speed, uh, trying to do whatever he could to evade the officers. But uh, the next pit maneuver uh, was successful, and this is where it is uh, on Pacific Coast Highway, the southbound side of Pacific Coast Highway, just past Palos Verdes Drive. Exactly. On, on Pacific Coast Highway, with all that traffic, opposing traffic, and he could have lost control and went into uh, uh, oncoming traffic from the other side of Pacific Coast Highway, northbound side of PCH, and, and that could have been uh, a real mess. Fortunately, it didn't happen. And, and again, they're setting up a perimeter. They've removed those people that were at the corner there, 
and uh, possibly uh, making their way, some of the officers, into those condominiums to make sure everybody's out, at least on the street side, just in case, just as a precaution. Dang. And, and those uh, condos there uh, on the left would be uh, down fire, down range from, uh, from those guns that are uh, positioned towards them and the suspect. All of that's being said. Yep, all of that's being said. He said, you know, let's not hurt anybody. Let's all go home safe. Um, let's bring this to a peaceful conclusion, and, uh, and we'll work this out uh, down at the station. But uh, you know, clearly he's not uh, listening to the officers at this time. Again, now there's a chance that uh, more trained uh, crisis negotiators may be en route to just to say the right thing to perhaps uh, to get him out of there. Now, whether or not there's communication between him and anybody else, if you had a cell phone, if that cell phone still has a, a charge to it, if there's been any communication between him and any people that he's connected with, we don't know, or if he's in touch with law enforcement, that uh, is a possibility. But uh, again, those are uh, questions we can't answer. He did. That's right. Yeah, we, we just don't know. A lot of times uh, that happens, and, and he did choose to stay in this general vicinity here, and he was making some loops, some laps uh, through Manhattan Beach and Hermosa, and it, perhaps he was lost. He's not familiar with the neighborhood, or indeed he could have a connection to, uh, to the beach cities. They have done, all the officers, all the agencies involved have done all the research they can on the vehicle, that he was driving on any information that they may have on the suspect to try to make uh, those connections with perhaps uh, friends, loved ones, to try to bring this uh, to an end. They may have zero communication, have no idea what they're dealing with, if he has a gun or not. So both case scenarios could be unfolding. That's right, and I know our assignment desk, our news desk, is working hard to answer some of those questions because perhaps a PIO from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department can give us some background information how this all started, when that carjacking actually occurred. Uh, <laughs> I'm working it. I'm working it. All right, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. I live blocks from this location. Uh, I've lived here all my life, the majority of my life, and, uh, and know this city, know this agency uh, very well. And they don't get a lot of action like this, uh, but they do at times. And when they do, uh, they're ready to handle it like any agency. As they train for it on a day-to-day -day basis, pursuits make their way through the beach cities as well. And, and uh, they were trained to, uh, to conduct that pit maneuver. Now, a point on that, though. When you enter a different jurisdiction and you are dealing with a different agency, that agency may be a bit more aggressive than other agencies. You saw when we were making our way through uh, portions of LA, around LAX and Playa del Rey, there may have been uh, an opportunity and an attempt to uh, bring this to an end through that boxing or a pit maneuver. We didn't see it. Why the Redondo Beach Police Department decided to get aggressive and do it, that's their, uh, that's their prerogative, and they did it. Absolutely. Uh, they absolutely did. Uh, you know, when you, when you look at the number of pursuits that they deal with uh, on an annual basis and, and the outcome of some of them uh, in terms of people losing their lives, uh, the Los Angeles Police Department had the uh, highest rate of fatalities in pursuits 
with uh, innocent people. And because of that, uh, they chose uh, to, to implement uh, a bit more of a cautious uh, approach at times. Uh, they will be aggressive, but there are other times where they feel that the suspect is just endangering uh, a good portion of the public uh, to a level that it just isn't safe, so they'll pull back. That's right. Own, own agencies. That's right. Essentially, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, they are responsible for policing unincorporated areas of L.A. County or maybe some communities that are actually incorporated, but they don't uh, have the resources to have their own police department. Yeah, Playa del Rey, the part that we showed, yep. And they are led by the Sheriff's Department, yep. Their own agencies. And we saw each of them uh, in play. El Segundo Police, then Manhattan Beach, were running from north to south, down through the south portion of the Santa Monica Bay. That's the way we call it, the South Bay. Then Manhattan Beach Police, uh, they were involved, aiding in the uh, pursuit. It still appeared that the Sheriff's Department was more the lead agency there. But once we got to Redondo here, it seemed like the Redondo Beach Police Department took control, and they were the ones who decided to, uh, to pit the vehicle. They did attempt the initial pit. Go, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, there you go. You're absolutely right. Uh, multiple agencies here throughout uh, Southern California. This is uh, this is Pacific Coast Highway, Highway One, the f most famous uh, highway in all of California, stretching from. Uh, the southern fringe of the state up uh, the north coast towards the Redwood Forest and this portion of PCH in the heart of Redondo Beach. Uh, they're running uh, from the up. It's completely closed, uh, as I mentioned earlier, between Palos Verdes Drive, that's the uh, street there, running left to right. And you can see the fire trucks are blocking traffic there on the uh, upper portion of uh, your screen there. That's Riviera Village there, a very uh, busy, popular shopping and dining area. Fire uh, crew standing by just in case. That's PCH. It's closed uh, here at Palos Verdes Boulevard all the way up towards Prospect. And those are just uh, people who are showing up on the corner there of Rock and Brews to get a, uh, a good view of what's happening. And you can see the sheriff's deputies are still there. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, traffic being diverted onto uh, Prospect, uh, essentially on the uh, south side of the closure, and PV Drive on the north side of the closure. There's, there's no question. And, and even, and even when this ends, and even when this ends, then there'll be some investigation here at the site where the pursuit came to an end. We'll have to get a tow truck on scene, and that takes some time as well. If we can pedal left a little bit in our helicopter, uh, I'm going to show. Uh, I'll show you that back up on PCH. Actually, because the morning rush is over, it doesn't look too bad. Traffic's just being diverted in a northerly direction on Prospect uh, here by the CBS. There's uh, Prospect there, and that's PCH. There's only uh, you know a half a dozen cars or so having to make their uh, way to turning right there or northbound on Prospect. 
not too bad, at least at this point. But uh, once, when just an hour, if you would have been here an hour or two prior during the morning rush, uh, there's a lot of high schools, elementary, middle schools in the area. This stretch of PCH is just jammed. Not the case now that we've entered the uh, mid to late morning hours here. Again, this pursuit started just after 8 o'clock uh, near Southgate or an unincorporated area of uh, L.A. County, a carjacking suspect, an alleged carjacking suspect being pursued here. The details of that carjacking, where it actually occurred and where the pursuit started, we're still trying to ascertain that. If we know anything on the suspect, we're going to bring that information to you. But this pursuit, after winding its way from uh, South L.A., we picked it up first at the 110 Harbor Freeway and Century Boulevard. He made his way due west down Century Boulevard all the way to LAX, uh, made a right turn, picked up uh, Manchester Boulevard, Manchester uh, to the sea, and then uh, made his way south through the beach cities. Unbelievable. If he was panicking, uh, maybe he didn't know he was in reverse and he was meaning to go forward, but it was in, uh, in rewind there. And, uh, and sure enough, he made his way for uh, almost a good city block there in Redondo Beach. And that was just prior to the pursuit coming to an end, just a few blocks south of that location. Uh, they, they weren't letting this guy get away, that's for sure. Uh, they wanted to. Yeah, it's, it's been about that, almost a half an hour now, the standoff. And again, these guns are trained on the suspect, and they're not going to move uh, from the suspect. They're watching him closely, his every move at this point. No, that's that. Uh, what, what would happen at that point is they would call in SWAT. They'd bring in uh, one of those uh, armored uh, vehicles, a Bearcat, plow, you know, plow it right into the side of his car so that then he's got uh, essentially nowhere to go. He's, he's even boxed in more with guns trained on him, which is an intimidating factor as well. They c will bring in a canine unit, but at this point, uh, that's not going to be useful because all the uh, windows are rolled up. And in certain situations and standoffs where the suspect starts to uh, get agitated and unroll the window and communicate with officers uh, in such a way that canines can be used as well. But they will bring in uh, some other resources to bring it to an end because you're absolutely right. This is, this is going to come to an end. They want it to come to a peaceful end. They don't want anybody to get hurt. Even though the suspect endangered their lives, these officers' lives, at least some of them, and uh, some innocent people driving down PCH and other streets in Southern California this morning, they don't want this guy to get hurt either. They brought it to an end. So far, we're not hearing of any uh, significant injuries uh, with the pursuit or with that carjacking, that alleged carjacking. So they're hopeful just to take this, uh, this suspect into custody without incident. They are. They're trained for this situation. They, these, these officers, when you know, they're out patrolling the streets, uh, but, you know, when they're not fighting crime, uh, they're in the classroom. They're always trying to uh, get their craft uh, even better. You know, they, they learn from past experiences. They share data. They share experiences with different uh, officers, jurisdictions from across the country to get a, a protocol going to see what the safest way to end a situation is. And, and these are highly trained officers in the city of Redondo Beach, and they're doing just that. They're patient, they're trying to communicate with this suspect, this carjacking suspect, and bring it to a peaceful end.
Uh, dozens. Uh, you and I both, Steve, together over the years. We've, we've covered so many of these. <laughs> exactly. Literally blocks away from my house. My phone's blowing up. All my friends, my people down there are texting me, trying to find out what's going on. And, and, and we, we, we don't have much information. <laughs> I, I, he, essentially, he passed within a block of my house. I was, I was pretty amazed how close, uh, how close uh, this pursuit did get. Uh, and, and again, we're not trying to make light of the situation, and, and, and we want to make sure that everybody knows this is still a very serious standoff situation. And, and a perimeter essentially has been set up. And what we say, we talk about that with wildfires, police activity. They set a line around an incident, whether it be uh, a forest that's burning or whether it be a situation in which other people uh, could be in danger. So what they've done is they cleared the street and the area. Yeah, they, they certainly do. No question. And, and, and the perimeter has increased. It's closed. It's closed. But also closed is this major uh, stretch of Palos Verdes uh, Boulevard. And they back people off from Rock and Bruce. So making a good point there, Lisa, is that they want to clear the neighborhood the best they can, push everybody back uh, out of harm's way. And they're doing that. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department there has, uh, has pushed uh, even the media back somewhat. Uh, the first thing I thought of, uh, you mentioned schools on lockdown. What are the closest uh, schools to this uh, location? There is a Catholic school, St. James Catholic School, uh, St. Lawrence, I should say, just uh, a block or so up the street here. Uh, whether or not uh, they've kind of locked those kids down in place, that's uh, unclear at this time, but there's a strong possibility. That's right. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, a strong forced uh, robbery like that, uh, absolutely. A, a weapon is involved here, and with that in mind, uh, these officers are taking this uh, very seriously. Uh, he looked like a, a larger uh, gentleman, either white or Hispanic, uh, shaved head. Uh, and, and that point where he did roll down the window and he was just acting uh, so casually, uh, we too thought that perhaps uh, he was getting ready to, uh, to call it quits, but uh, that was not the case as well. He was making his way through the beach cities. And we did get one unconfirmed report that there was a time when this pursuit made its way through Hermosa Beach. I would say Hermosa is, yeah, of the three beach cities has the narrowest of alleys and streets, uh, the numbered streets there, the courts. Very easy uh, to kind of sneak into an area if officers are trailing far enough behind and, uh, and lose them. And we believe that that did happen, actually, for a short time. Now, there was a law enforcement uh, airship up, so they were able to guide uh, officers back. But it did appear for at least a short period of time he may have been able to, to duck away and evade police uh, patrol cars on the ground through Hermosa Beach for a very short period of time. But this has uh, come to an end. Uh, well, at least the pursuit part of it uh, has the vehicular portion of the pursuit uh, of the uh, suspect, the, uh, the robbery and the uh, carjacking suspect here uh, on Pacific Coast Highway between Prospect Avenue and Palos Verdes Drive. No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, and it could be either scenario in that, uh, you know, the suspects, a lot of times they do come back to neighborhoods they are familiar with and they think that uh, they have a better chance of uh, evading police, perhaps even ducking into a property that they're familiar with, uh, or they just get lost. You know, they, they're, they're in an area, they're just trying to evade police and they don't really have much of a direction or a plan and they just end up in neighborhoods. And, and a lot of times that'll go against them because they'll run into a dead end or, or another location where they just can't uh, get away. And uh, that wasn't the case here, that's for sure. He was able to make his way through the beach cities to this point.
It certainly was. He's not. And I'm trying to get I'm trying to get some help on the ground here and to get uh, that information. Uh, perhaps we can find that out from the Round of Beach Police Department because, as you can see, officers trained on him. Uh, and they have different vantage points of that suspect at this time and whether or not they've seen any movement uh, from the suspect. If we pan just to the right, it looks like a dark colored uh, pickup truck has arrived. I told you that uh, perhaps some uh, some reinforcements, some heavier uh, duty uh, equipment maybe coming in and uh, those officers uh, may be SWAT officers. You had asked uh, Steve and Lisa, what's the next move? They're not going to just sit here for hours and hours, and they will bring in heavier equipment. Yep. Yeah, I don't see them uh, as of yet, but uh, that was the point I made uh, just a short time ago that I would uh, I would be surprised if they, they're not here soon because they are a definite uh, good resource in a situation like this, especially if uh, windows, doors start opening up. Uh, they're a, a good line uh, uh, between the officers and the suspects. So they are officers. Those canine, they are officers themselves, those dogs. They're brave, brave dogs. And that's why they want to bring this to an end. And, and Rodano Beach, I mean, they were the ones who uh, who took the lead once it entered their city and said, "Hey, not in our city. We want we want to bring this to an end quickly." And they they you know tried the pit maneuver a couple of times and were finally successful, even doing it on Pacific Coast Highway because they wanted to bring it to an end. So with that in mind, they may be a little bit aggressive in trying to bring this to a quicker end, uh, as opposed to letting it uh, last for uh, hours on end, which we have seen. We've seen an entire freeway be shut down for a couple of hours as they've negotiated with uh, these suspects. Uh, and again, they're not doing what they're told. They were running from police, these suspects, this suspect as well. They're being told to pull over. They don't. And that's the initial thing. As soon as you get lit up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they want to get away. That's right. And, and the history... Deep breath, absolutely. Uh, calm, deep breath once these pursuits come to an end uh, because they are uh, they're running high as uh, these pursuits are going on. And as soon as they come to an end, uh, they have that adrenaline. They have that energy. And, and being able to manage it, yeah, and no question. Well, as I, as I had uh, predicted, who's arrived? SWAT. SWAT is here now. They're a heavily uh, armored vehicle. You could see uh, SWAT uh, officers already on scene. And at times, it takes uh, some time for those officers because they're specially trained officers. They may live in Santa Clarita or off in Long Beach and uh, have to come to a scene. But uh, they've arrived uh, here. Uh, you could see uh, a couple of them, uh, you know, in dressed uh, differently and having uh, more armor, and here he goes. Here goes that uh, that armor that, that armored vehicle here, and it's going to push right up against uh, the vehicle, as I had uh, predicted uh, earlier. That's exactly what's uh, what's happening here. To intimidate, yes. To provide more support, yes. 
for the officers, protection to the officers, absolutely, and uh, hopefully bring this, uh, bring this to an end. And they're boxing him in, as I'd indicated. Yeah, absolutely. And the windshield uh, on that armored vehicle, obviously bulletproof. He's going to pop open the porthole there on the top, uh, and then he will have uh, a weapon trained uh, on that suspect as well. More uh, art artillery here uh, arriving on scene. The officers uh, still that that lead patrol car, that Redondo Beach patrol car, still uh, engaged with the uh, back uh, right rear of this uh, this compact car that was being uh, pursued uh, for miles and miles uh, for a, for a couple of hours. And here comes another armored vehicle, as I said. Boxing in on both sides. There we go. Now it's closed. And now uh, they have uh, better protection uh, of the situation, even a stronger perimeter or line uh, against uh, the danger. And then you, you will see some of these uh, lead officers, some of them uh, that were in uh, the patrol cars, back off. Some of them will still stay trained. So now we're going to have uh, bullets uh, pointed uh, or weapons pointed at this guy from, from every angle and uh, coming from uh, vehicles that are the, the most... Uh, protected vehicles out there in law enforcement, these SWAT vehicles. And it came to a conclusion here, the vehicular part of it, uh, on Pacific Coast Highway. That's PCH, a major stretch of it, shut down north and southbound here in Pacific Coast uh, on Pacific Coast Highway between Palos Verdes Drive and Prospect Avenue. You cannot make your way in either direction. A couple schools nearby, uh, Riviera Hall Lutheran School, St. Lawrence Catholic School, uh, Toledo Elementary School, part of the Redondo Beach Unified School District. Close enough that they may be, uh, they may be on, uh, on lockdown. If we tilt the camera up or modified lockdown. If we tilt the camera up, we'll show you PV Drive. There's uh, the fat burger there on the corner. Uh, still some people uh, out there. And if we pan to the right up the street, you could see uh, more law officers, uh, from more police officers here showing up. Uh, police tape is up. There's more blocking off streets. Large perimeter now has been set up uh, in uh, this beach community of the South Bay in Redondo Beach. Yeah, right there on the corner of, uh, that's Palos Verdes uh, Drive, and uh, yeah, we'll show you the distance uh, between them, because uh, they, they removed the ones on the other side of the street uh, in front of Rock and Brisbane, but, but, uh, but there they are, that's, they're, they're still relatively cl close. Uh, so the Redondo Beach Police, uh, Police Department, uh, you know, dates back to 1892, one of the older agencies here in Southern California, and they've been uh, patrolling uh, the beach city here uh, since then, uh, and they do have their own SWAT uh, apparatus. Uh, they have canines, the special weapons uh, tactics team of the SWAT department, and, and they're highly trained and ready to handle anything. And there you can see more members uh, piling out the back end of the, uh, the one vehicle here, two of them boxing uh, the suspect in. And, and whether or not there's been movement from this uh, suspect, that's something we still are trying to uh, ascertain at this point. But as you can see, it looks like the majority of the officers that did have their guns uh, positioned uh, from that patrol car have backed off, and now it's just uh, the SWAT members that are uh, monitoring this. Uh, he was, yeah, 40, I would say 40 to 45, no question. He really, he was... The, the, I think he went faster in reverse than he did uh, going forward during the whole pursuit. That was, that was something else.
Yeah, that's what, that's what it looks like. It certainly was on Pacific Coast Highway. Can't get much more crowded than, than that in Redondo Beach, that's for sure. Because uh, we saw opportunities prior to what we saw here in Redondo Beach uh, uh, of officers choosing not to on uh, much less traveled streets uh, through Los Angeles, up into Westchester, Playa del Rey. Uh, and it wasn't until Redondo Beach uh, the officers here decided to, uh, to bring this to an end and to... Uh, to conduct that pit maneuver. And that's the biggest challenge. That's the biggest challenge in deploying those is, is where that suspect is going to be. And if it's on a, you know, a long, narrow highway in a des you know, desolate area, then it's easy. They know that he's traveling north or southbound on uh, Interstate 5, and they can deploy officers in advance of where the pursuit is and throw those strips out. And they have plenty of time to do so. In a situation like this, in a, in a highly urbanized area off the freeway, it becomes much more challenging. They have to uh, essentially get a, get a feel for what the suspect is doing. And they were able to, to, to do that in knowing that this guy has pretty much been traveling in the same direction on, on a lot of the major thoroughfares uh, from uh, Florence. They, 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 they vary in length, but they're generally anywhere from uh, six to maybe perhaps uh, eight or nine feet. They can't be so long that they become cumbersome to to toss out but uh, essentially they they're, they're 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 just these metal spikes that uh, are set to sort of deploy vertically upwards so that if a vehicle were to drive over them it's going to do some serious damage and and essentially uh, disable the vehicle through flattening uh, those tires Uh, you're, you're right. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you, you could take, you know, that thought process and just say, hey, this guy has uh, endangered officers, endanger, endangered the general public out there. He's tying up resources. He's shut down a major stretch of Highway 1 here in Southern California, and he's not doing what he's told. That, that's just not the protocol of these officers. You're, you're absolutely right. You, and you can see from our picture, and we're trying to get tight uh, up against it, you can see inside the windshield of the SWAT vehicle there on the top of your screen, you can see some movement with one of the officers there. You can see that gun drawn. You see that SWAT officer there right out of the porthole with... Uh, 
with, with a good, uh, and he's uh, essentially communicating. He has a mic on the side. He's communicating with other officers as to what he sees, anything uh, unique, if there's any movement, if perhaps he does see somebody through the tinted windows of somebody in the back. But until we see those four fingers uh, by the officers, meaning code four, all clear, we have no idea what we're dealing with. We don't know if there is somebody in the back of uh, that car. We don't know what kind of weapon or weapons that this suspect has at this time. This is just no, no question. All we know is that this suspect does not want to give up. Uh, SWAT has been called out. They've got him blocked in. A perimeter has been set up. PCH is completely shut down for a couple of blocks between Prospect Avenue on the south and Palos Verdes Drive on the north. A couple schools in the area, elementary schools, Catholic schools, possibly on some modified lockdown. They've set up a perimeter and pushed people back far away that if, if there was an exchange of gunfire, they would be out of harm's way. Because hey, you can see there, these uh, condominiums here are, are, you know, maybe 15 feet away. You know, the beach cities, the South Bay is as much as Southern California because of the prime real estate. You can shake hands with drivers uh, going past you on the roadways or with your neighbors because uh, of the prime property. And that's the case here. Everything's uh, close, uh, compacted. Yeah, and, and no question. And again, uh, I'm sure these officers have done everything they can to clear the scene, set up the perimeter or the line around uh, the uh, area of danger, uh, that incident point uh, that could occur. And, and, and they continue to negotiate with, these guy, with this guy uh, and, and hope that they'll bring this to a safe conclusion. But as time goes on, and again, time is on the officer's side, they are being patient, but there, there will come a point where they're going to want to bring this to an end. And how they do it, are they going to crack through the windshield and uh, gain entry there, perhaps... Uh, you know, throw some sort of uh, incinerary device in there, bring in a canine, something to, uh, to put this uh, to an end and bring this guy into a... Three hours. Uh, they, they certainly are, uh, because they want to bring this to a peaceful conclusion. They don't want to overly agitate them, although it is intimidating when you see two armored vehicles, two SWAT vehicles, uh, box you in like that with guns drawn. Uh, they essentially... Uh, it, it is. I, I want to show you something in... And I want to show you something in our picture. If we kind of tilt the camera up just a little bit and push in, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, because they were the lead agency, we'll push in right there. Those officers, uh, we'll push in right there, are still uh, on scene. Maybe some of the same uh, officers that first picked up uh, this pursuit after the incident, the uh, strong armed robbery, the carjacking that place, uh, took place near 68th and Central, uh, perhaps at 740 this morning. Yeah, absolutely. That was all Redondo Beach. Uh, all the pit maneuvers uh, that you saw were uh, conducted in the city of Redondo Beach uh, off of Broadway and over into PCH, a very busy stretch of Pacific Coast Highway. On Pacific Coast Highway, backwards, uh, he was in the right uh, lane in that uh, he was traveling southbound on Pacific Coast Highway in a southerly direction, but driving backwards uh, towards officers that were, uh, that were essentially behind him and uh, that truck as well that... Uh, perhaps is trying to be a, a good Samaritan. But again, that is not a wise thing to do ever. 
I need to remind everybody that if you, if you hear lights and sirens in a situation like this, a pursuit coming up from behind you, slow down, pull over to the right, give the officers plenty of space. Don't try to be a hero because, again, you could be dealing with a carjack suspect, carjacking suspect who has a weapon who uh, may try to hurt you. Uh, that, that's uh, Rodano Beach uh, down below there, and uh, Rodano Beach Police is uh, still the lead agency on this, but you can see that the Sheriff's Department, they're dressed in the uh, tan uh, uniforms there. We'll tilt the camera up and we'll show you. Uh, there's the Sheriff's deputies, and they patrol the community of Florence, an unincorporated area of Los Angeles County, so they do the policing there. So they were the agency, the lead agency, when this pursuit first started near that intersection of 68 and Central. Whether or not the actual incident occurred there or that's where the suspect was picked up, what time the incident occurred, none of that uh, has been ironed out as of yet. We're still trying to ascertain that information. If the assignment desk gets that for us, I know that we will relay it to you as quickly as possible. But then it was the sheriff's deputies who uh, essentially were the lead agency on this pursuit, even though it made its way into Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, LAPD jurisdiction, down Century Boulevard. And, and for a time, for actually several minutes, I think you agreed, Steve and Lisa, that it looked more like a procession than a pursuit. Very slow moving, below, below speed limit. A guy was driving very safely. Uh, he, was, he was stopping uh, at every stoplight. He would go through the red, but only when he knew the intersection was safe and there wasn't any opposing traffic. Then, once he went into the beach cities, that's where we saw other agencies pick up uh, the deal. And that was Manhattan. Exactly right. Uh, and, and here we are on Pacific Coast Highway again. If you might just be t tuning in, PCH is shut down completely for a couple blocks in Redondo Beach as this has now become a standoff. That suspect not giving up, choosing not to listen to the instructions of the officers and the SWAT team members. There's the L.A. County Sheriff's deputies uh, standing by. Perhaps some of those uh, were, uh, were right there. That is a drone up there now. And whether or not that is a law enforcement drone or it is a law enforcement drone. We are getting confirmation that is a law enforcement drone that is being used for surveillance as well. Uh, they, the suspect likely will not have any idea that it's anywhere near the automobile. So once it moves closer to the automobile, it's going to get a better look. It can look in the back seat. Confirm. Make sure. Make sure. See, technology is wonderful now, and and these are these are. This is another uh, example of uh, how, with technology, these officers are constantly trying to improve their craft of law enforcement, of engaging. And we'll we'll come back to the suspect just to make sure that there hasn't been any action. But there's a. And the K-9 units have arrived actually now as well. So now everything is here. Everything's at, uh, yeah, everything that they can use at this point. Uh, the, only, the only thing that may not be here is a psychologist, which sometimes they do bring in to uh, help with the, uh, with the negotiation. So that we may be awaiting that as well. And we're seeing more people being moved out of the way uh, first. Uh, they remember all the people that were up by the Fat Burger there on the corner of PCH. They've been pushed back as well. Yeah. And an and example of, of why, how time is on their side, Lisa and Steve. They were going to clear the area. They're going to bring in all the resources, the canine, the SWAT, the drone. They're going to surveillance the car the best they can. And then they're going to make a decision how they're going to bring this to an end. Because clearly, 
it appears now uh, that we're at 1045. This guy isn't giving up, doesn't want to give up, so they're going to have to take some sort of action to bring this to an end. It can't go on forever. Yep. 740-ish. 7.40 this morning near 68th and Central. That's where either the pursuit just started or that's where the incident that led to the pursuit, the carjacking, the uh, strong-armed robbery. But bottom line, that's in the community of Florence, very close to the city of Los Angeles, South L.A. Sheriff's Department picks it up there and essentially follows this guy for miles towards LAX, down Century Boulevard, for the most part, from the 110 Harbor Freeway, right into the heart of LAX. Uh, he made his way on the north side of the complex, uh, picked up Manchester, made his way through the community of Westchester, Playa del Rey, and then he took the coastal route right along, uh, the, right along the, ve the beach and went through the beach cities. Yeah, and that was just something uh, rather remarkable, something I've never seen. And we talked about it being mostly a slow-speed procession more than a, you know, a pursuit. Uh, but when, once he started to go backwards, that's when he was moving at the highest rate of speed, I think, for the entire pursuit, perhaps uh, 45 miles an hour or so, down the southbound side of Pacific Coast Highway, coming away from uh, Torrance Boulevard there in the heart of Redondo Beach, the very busy stretch of Pacific Coast Highway, endangering uh, the lives of, Motorists and officers, and then the, then the pit maneuver. I have a little bit more. Uh, I have a little bit more information that I just got here about the start of the incident, and it did start as a carjacking at 68th and Gage. Now we're here, which is very close to Central, so that's just a block away. Um, it was a strong arm robbery, but it doesn't appear any kind of weapon was used. What a strong arm robbery is? Yes, weapons can be used in in, in that case, but any type of force with your body, with your arm. You know, physical force could be used. And that may have been the case where this, this guy, from what I saw, looked to be a pretty big, uh, pretty big guy uh, in this car here. Uh, uh, either a white or Hispanic male, shaved head, bigger dude. And he actually, uh, you know, could have used his bodily force to uh, push somebody out of the automobile and, uh, and take that car over. And uh, whether or not uh, it occurred right at 68th and Gage or the pursuit did, that's unclear at this time. Bottom line, that intersection is in Florence, and that's why the Sheriff's Department first picked it up there. Status, yeah, static quo, absolutely, right now. I, again, they're clearing the scene the best they can. They're widening the perimeter, the safety barrier, making sure everybody's out of harm's way, making sure all the resources that they need to bring this to an end are in place. A SWAT first, as I said, they're going to call them in, and they arrive quickly. And then the canine units, the drones, all the surveillance equipment they can use. That uh, officer uh, out of the uh, little porthole there on the one armored vehicle there uh, has good vision on the car. He's relaying information to the lead officer, officers, and they're getting a game plan. And once they have that game plan and all those resources in place, they're going to make a move here. What that move will be, perhaps they'll try to break into, uh, into the car with uh, some mechanism uh, and uh, put some sort of uh, tear gas and incendiary device in there so that that would force that suspect out of there. That would only occur if they are certain that nobody else, somebody innocent might be inside that vehicle. That has to be uh, cleared first. And once that happens, then some sort of movement will happen. But right now, they're just waiting, a waiting game. They're patient because they have the time to do that.
Uh, that, that's, that's possible, that's very possible. Whether or not he had a weapon to do that, that's unclear. We just don't know uh, at this time. If they were certain he didn't have a weapon, uh, completely certain, and completely certain that that car was clear of anybody except for the, for the suspect, then I think they would have made uh, some sort of movement by now. But they don't know that. And uh, they don't want to put themselves in harm's way or anybody else. And that's what they're doing here in this uh, beach community, Redondo Beach, the southern uh, beach city here in the South Bay. And Pacific Coast Highway down below is completely shut down for a couple of blocks between Palos Verdes Boulevard on the north side and Prospect Avenue on the south side. Okay. Um, uh, we still have 40 minutes, about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, hey, hey, ER, I'm getting people wondering why we're not streaming this. Can you ask right there? We are. All right, folks, welcome to the Fox 10 and News Now stream, part of fox10phoenix.com. We are still looking at this police standoff carjacking suspect. This has been hours in the making here, and well, they have him surrounded, but now they are just waiting for more word on what to do. They have the police drone there as well, hoping to get some additional images maybe of the suspect inside the car. Right, folks wanted to show you uh, the location kind of an aerial map here and this is the area right here where the situation is happening let's see here with my with my mouse I'll take it uh, big for just a second here and we can show you this is the area right here where the situation is happening see the aerial look above here and there's a, where we are dealing with right here let's take you back now to the action
And we see more SWAT team members arriving here at the scene. We're going to be seeing if they maybe in just a little bit, they'll be making their move to the car and trying to get that suspect out of the car. We're continuing to watch here live on the Fox 10 and News Downstream, part of Fox10Phoenix.com. and the LA County Sheriff's Department SWAT team. Yeah, uh, I, I, those are great questions. And, and again, they're trying to find out as much as uh, they can about this suspect, bring in as much in the way of resources that they need. And speaking of which, uh, we just saw this, and uh, Zareen mentioned this, and she's been pushed back to a point. I saw where she was. She does not have a good visual on this, so it's difficult for her to really get an assessment from her ground shot. She's been pushed back just like the public to get out of uh, harm's way. But there we go. This is the LA. We'll push in. This is the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. It's their SWAT team that is now on scene here as well. And this was uh, the lead agency. These guys, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're something else. Talk about highly trained, and they're going to bring in this vehicle as well. So clearly they're waiting, as I've been mentioning, more resources. Never can have enough uh, resources on scene. The canine units, a game plan, the safety, and then something's going to happen. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen these enough. Uh, we we see the uh, uh, it's it, it's it's artwork. It's it's sort of like a, a musical in that uh, everything sort of comes around, comes into play. Uh, there is a there's a process to all of this, and this is part of it that they bring in these resources, everything that's needed, so that they know that they can bring this to a conclusion without to any officers or anybody uh, in the public uh, being hurt. So they're going to position this vehicle right up against the other armored vehicles. And uh, the, the armored uh, individuals down below here, uh, all the officers down below, uh, what they have here is, is really something else. And uh, just as an intimidating factor. And then you have to start to think about the suspect in the car uh, uh, itself. Uh, if, uh, if the individual there is indeed uh, getting to the point where, all right, I've had enough of this. You know, perhaps, you know, he's, he's hungry. He may need to use the bathroom. Um, he, he knows that he's surrounded with uh, some of the most heavily armored uh, vehicles that he's ever seen this up close and personal. He knows he's not going to get out. What his mindset is. Uh, and no question. And he may, there may be a dialogue uh, with uh, law enforcement as well, either between him uh, and the officers or some people that know him. This, you know, this has been televised uh, across the city for hours, and we did get a, a pretty good glimpse of the individual. So I'm sure that there's somebody connected uh, to this man out there that uh, knows him, knows a bit about him, and maybe they've made contact on their own with the officers uh, involved. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're swapping out vehicles. So the Redondo Beach Police Department's pulling back because this was uh, a sheriff's agency uh, uh, initiation of, uh, of the incident at 68th and Gage in the community of Florence. Uh, they're pulling in here, and, and their vehicle, uh, amazing, what the, the weaponry they have. It, 
Exactly. Close proximity. That's exactly right. Uh, unsure about that. Because he made contact uh, with the back of the car, they may have to leave it there for as part of the investigation. That's possible in situations like that. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I would have thought that they would have removed that car already if they were going to. Uh, here comes the other armored vehicle. Yeah, we, yeah. all those, all those Redondo Beach uh, patrol officers and the patrol cars backed off once those two uh, armored vehicles uh, from the city arrived on scene. And this is the second one. Here's the LA County Sheriff's uh, second armored vehicle that's coming up uh, on scene too. But we still have the one trained, uh, the officer trained on the suspect there out of the porthole of one of the first armored vehicles that arrived. SWATs, yes, it, it, the SWAT is the best, special weapons and tactics, and they are special weapons, and the highly trained officers, these SWAT officers are down below here so that they can handle a situation like this. A standoff of this pursuit suspect uh, that's wanted in a carjacking, a strong armed robbery. Unclear if he has a weapon, uh, there was some talk that perhaps not, and he just used his, his uh, force, uh, he's a big guy, to uh, take over the driver of the car that he carjacked, that information Still has not been confirmed at this time, but uh, this is, uh, yeah, absolutely. Ab absolutely, you have to in any situation, and with any stop, any any random traffic stop, any stop is not ordinary. It's not routine. You could be dealing with uh, somebody like what we saw last week uh, in Whittier, and that's how every officer has to handle a stop or a situation like that. From benign as a traffic stop, from somebody uh, running through a stoplight uh, to a situation like this. And, and uh, this is a good point just to remind everybody, if you do get pulled over, these officers, uh, you know, they're, they're highly trained. Uh, they're out there protecting us. If you get pulled over, pull over, hands at 10 and 2 in clear uh, vision of the officers. Wait till they uh, command you to unroll the window. Do what, do what they ask you to and, and, and do it in a, in a very guarded and slow way so that they know that you're on their side and you're going to cooperate with them and give them any information that they need. To protect us, to keep these bad guys off the street. This is a bad guy, allegedly. He strong-armed a person out of their car and, and took it. A person frightened beyond, I'm sure, possibly on their way to work or school. And, uh, and, and he took, uh, took over that individual and took, took their car. I, I couldn't tell if there was actually engagement at this uh, at this point. It was very close. Now, watching this, you guys ask, is, is something getting ready to happen? Perhaps, because you can see the officers are organizing themselves. They have their weapons, uh, uh, all the equipment they need to possibly approach the vehicle and, uh, and gain access to it to bring this to an end. They're communicating. They've trained for this.
And they're moving that car, that patrol car. Now it looks like they're getting ready to do something. Can you get the license plate, Vince? All right. Uh, go ahead there, Jeff. All right. Yeah, I got it. Uh, is everybody still here? Let's get this guy. All right, folks, you are continuing to watch here live on the Fox 10 News Now stream of this police standoff that has been just happening for hours now, including that pursuit that was very slow at times. You know, the, the fastest we saw the suspect going in the car is when he was actually in reverse. We're continuing to watch here live as SWAT team members getting closer to the car where the suspect is still in. We saw moments ago the police drone being used as well. Oh, he's getting out. He's getting out, Vince. The door open. Tilt up. All right. Suspect, uh, if you guys are watching this online, suspect, uh, for whatever reason, after this long standoff, is deciding to give up. He's doing exactly what he's told, even though he, uh, he didn't for, uh, for a couple of hours. Taking off his shirt. Hands up. And he's being directed by these SWAT officers. I think uh, he was intimidated enough, perhaps uh, getting impatient, needed to get out of the vehicle. So they are directing him uh, 
to walk backwards, uh, not facing him. We'll get in a better position here to, uh, to get this, but this looks to be canine uh, standing by there, as you can see. Guns drawn. The most highly trained uh, SWAT team, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department here. And this is uh, going to come to a conclusion, we believe, here as this suspect uh, that was being pursued from the community of Florence near South L.A. all the way to this point in Redondo Beach. And suspect is in custody. Not a code four yet. We're going to watch uh, as these officers clear the vehicle, make sure nobody else is in harm's way. Not until we see four fingers. Code four will this uh, officially be over. Suspect uh, in custody. Uh, bigger guy, as I uh, had described him, uh, a white male shaved head, white, uh, white male or uh, Hispanic. And he's been taken uh, into custody here in Redondo Beach on Pacific Coast Highway down below here. It looks like once the L.A. County Sheriff's uh, SWAT team arrived on scene, uh, he didn't want to have anything to do with that. So now what they're uh, doing is they're clearing the vehicle that was pursued from Florence through South L.A. over towards LAX, Westchester, Playa del Rey, into El Segundo, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and Redondo Beach, and ending here in Redondo Beach on a busy stretch of Highway 1, the highway that stretches from the southern fringes of the state all the way to the Redwood Block, north and southbound sides here between Palos Verdes Boulevard and Prospect. Fortunately, coming to a successful and peaceful end, we are now in a Code 4 situation. The vehicle has been cleared. The threat is over. That uh, man will be taken to jail. He is going to be written up on a number of, uh, a number of violations, including yeah, the most significant, the armed robbery and carjacking, and the strong armed robbery. Whether or not uh, a weapon that was inside that vehicle, uh, we didn't see one being taken out. Uh, one was not... Uh, taken from the suspect and he's going to be on his way uh, on his way to jail here and they're going to try to clear this activity and reopen PCH as quickly as possible all right this is uh, this is through thank you guys for watching on Fox 11 and our, our Facebook page uh, our website foxla.com we will all right there so you see this coming to a peaceful ending Wow, what a uh, marathon session this was, but fortunately, no officers were injured. That is the good thing. Let's show you while, uh, while you're still with us here on the Fox 10 and News Now stream. Let's show you how they were able to trap the suspect there. We'll take you there moments ago. Take a look at this. You can see how dangerous that could be. And that's the last thing we want is for anybody to get hurt. We're on PCH. We're, almost, we're down into the Torrance area now. And that will be uh, push into that patrol car. I'm not sure who this is. If that is um, Redondo Beach. Uh, another pit. Here goes again. That's better. We're in Palos Verdes. Okay, this is going to end now, I believe. They've got to get behind them. I'm not certain why they don't. There we go. Finally, they lodged the vehicle. So that was the takedown right there. And then it lasted a whole nother hour with this standoff. We're going to take you now back out live to live aerials to show you what's going on there. Just wanted to show that to you guys. If you were coming into the stream and wanting to see a little bit of that chase, we're going to clip it as well on our Fox 10 Phoenix YouTube page. And if you haven't already done so, now would be that perfect time. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll always be in the know when we're covering breaking news from anywhere across the country. We've got you covered. We're seeing many agencies there and different SWAT team members coming to this area. Watching live here on the Fox 10 and News Now stream, brought to Fox10Phoenix.com.